Maldives is absolutely unique. It's very different from all other countries. And I think from the moment you land in this country, you realize that it's very different. Starting from the airport, uh, the way you actually land, the fact that you land uh, on an island where the runway uh, starts and ends on that particular island, and that's the island with, with the airport. So it's something unique. The way you get off the uh, aircraft and jump onto a boat or a, a, a speedboat, that is absolutely unique. So that's from one perspective. And then also the people, uh, very unique. Uh, the roads, the gullies, in fact, there are no major highways here in this uh, country because it's made up of little islands. Uh, a lot of it is pavement, especially in Mali. And the people themselves are, are really beautiful people. Obviously, each one gets along with his own thing and each one is doing his own thing. I think it's uh, uh, not so easy for them to actually uh, work and earn uh, because of uh, the size of the nation and so on. But I'd like to think that uh, everyone seems to be very happy people, mashallah. If crime rates are increasing in the Maldives, sometimes we, we've got to go back to the root causes of crime. And one of the root causes of crime, one of the root causes of crime is uh, intoxicants. And I think, uh, that, you know, from the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, where he speaks of intoxicants being one of the root causes of evil. Uh, sometimes, maybe, perhaps, if people get involved in drugs and alcohol and various other forms of intoxicants, then it leads to other things. And from there, uh, it makes people irresponsible, it makes them misbehave, it makes them, it leads them to crime. So it could be a possibility. I'm, I'm not speaking exactly of this particular nation because I don't know the exact details. But just from a religious perspective, if we deal with uh, people in terms of what they consume, and if we try and help them to save themselves from drugs especially, then I think we would really be able to go a long way in helping them also when it comes to crime. Similarly, uh, the issue of uh, employment perhaps. I know it's a nation that's uh, limited in terms of its space and perhaps opportunities but if we try to alleviate that to a certain extent we might also be able to help in terms of the issue of crime what i've also noticed is sometimes when we have uh, laziness that creeps in we find people who don't want to work even if the work is available and as a result they they resort to crime in order to survive and that's quite uh, difficult actually. So we ask Allah to make it easy. I think Maldives relies heavily on tourism. Uh, tourism has its positives and its negatives. The positives in terms of goodness, you know, the opportunity to showcase the goodness to people who come to this nation. And uh, the negatives are perhaps some of the tourists might be coming with their own systems and styles which may not be that uh, conducive to the uh, positive uh, you know, upbringing, or should I say the positive uh, development of the nation. So as a whole, it's up to us to be responsible and it's up to us to make the most of the opportunities that the Almighty is presented. Uh, if I knew, I would probably be the president. What that means is obviously I wouldn't be able to pinpoint. It's trial and error. And I think it's just uh, generally one of the reasons I am here is trying to, is to try to encourage people to be better in terms of their character, their conduct, their religion, their, their connection to the Almighty because I believe if you are connected to your maker you will obviously be able to be a more responsible person and the further you are from your maker the more you feel that this life is just there to enjoy and there, therefore you start trampling over the toes of others so I think yes we need to pray for the nation number one beautiful nation I did say yesterday in one of my tweets that may Allah protect this nation it's a beautiful nation uh, but at the same time, every single one of us needs to contribute towards the upliftment of this beautiful nation. We need to contribute towards the, the, the country, uh, towards its people, towards the infrastructure and positive development. So ask yourself, what did I give the Maldives? Don't ask yourself, what did the Maldives give me? And I think in that way, we, we might be able to help the people get direction. Well, I believe that it's up to your country to decide what it wants. It's wrong for me to come from abroad and decide what you need. So I am not able to comment on, uh, you know, the details of what's going on here. The truth is, I don't actually know the exact details. What I do know, lovely people, you need to help yourself. Don't be violent. Don't be intolerant. Learn to talk to one another. 
uh, learn to ex learn to try and uh, support one another in all forms of good work, no matter who is doing the good work. It doesn't have to be me who's doing the good work. It can be anyone. If they're doing good work, support them and pat them on the back. But I hope and I pray that whatever it is, we see peace, stability, security and growth. Because if you want to see your nation growing, you need peace. If you'd like to see peace, you need tolerance and understanding. You need, uh, you know, goodness. So. It's not up to me to come and uh, instruct you, you know, to say do this and do that, but it's up to you, inshallah, as a nation to choose your way forward. Uh, the, the, the best decisions that you would make are those decisions that are guided, inshallah, uh, by the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I think we want to speak about the role model uh, in Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and various other role models whom we can look up to for an example, because uh, many a time what's happening is people look at uh, movies and they get so engrossed whether it's Hollywood or Bollywood or whatever it is and they don't realize that in real life these people who are acting in these movies are actually struggling. A lot of them are struggling to cope no matter who they are. So it's no use looking at a movie or getting excited by, by thinking that one day I'm going to have a life of that nature because even those who act in those movies do not have that particular life. So it's important to come back to the ground and to look at reality and to see real people, to learn from them how to tackle the ups and downs of life. Life is not always rosy. In fact, it will never be rosy. But what we can do is we can try and uh, direct the youth to say when challenges do come in your direction, this is the way you should deal with them. Some people deal with challenges in a very negative way. Some people deal with challenges in a way that's uh, uh, not not uh, beneficial to the nation but I think inshallah if we uh, keep on speaking about it keep on reminding uh, the youth and the people the good thing is it's a Muslim country and the good thing is there they, they, they are standards and morals that uh, the majority would live by so that's really good and I think that's uh, the foundations of success are all there it's just now we've got to all put it together inshallah and uh, be dedicated you know success doesn't come overnight but when we put an effort in a certain direction for say 10 years, 20 years, then we might start seeing the fruits of it, sometimes even earlier. When it comes to the issue of halal and haram, obviously we do have opinions and so on and uh, you know, we do have that which is best. I believe that if, if we're as Muslimin, we should understand the melody of the Quran is something that's a gift to the Ummah. This melody has an effect on plants and it's proven. It has an effect on sick people and it has been proven. It has an effect on the unborn child and it is proven. So why do we need to resort to other things? Uh, the music industry of today is one of the dirtiest industries possible. And I think this is said even by the Christians and the Jews and people of morals and values, where if you listen to the lyrics of any of most of the, uh, you know, uh, music that's available today, you'll find it becoming even dirtier such that it's embarrassing to hear it uh, may Allah protect us. So it would be difficult for us to, uh, to try and condone it or to try and uh, say that, you know, it's, it's fine and it's okay. The best thing for a mu'min and a believer to do is to abstain. When we do have that which is uh, much better than it, uh, even if we do not get into the debate of halal and haram, uh, if you're a responsible mu'min, you would abstain from it because it's something that uh, you don't need. You know, we have morals and values uh, would we like to see our children with worse morals and values? Well, if we want, we need to s uh, sow the seeds of uh, development in terms of morals rather than degradation. Because if we continue to lead a life uh, pretending like we're all tourists on the same island, yet we are citizens, then we get lost with them. So we need to distinguish between who is the person coming from abroad in order to enjoy perhaps the environment and who are real citizens who have to live here forever. There's a big difference between the two, but some of us might be getting caught in the middle and we, we, we think we're on a perpetual holiday. So that's not how it should be. We should be people who understand that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed the believer with so much purity and goodness. And Islam is all about being pure and good. And it pays back. For example, a person who stays away from adultery and fornication, uh, they would have controlled themselves for a while. but. Allah pays them back with a lot of contentment, a lot of happiness, a lot of focus in life. They're able to achieve much more. Uh, if someone just allows themselves to drop uh, into all this uh, worldly sort of uh, mag you know, magnetic pull that, that the worldly enjoyments do have, 
sometimes they may lose themselves in the process. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us and to guide us. Tobacco. You're asking me if smoking is haram. To be honest with you, anything that's harmful to this body that does not belong to you is haram. It's like telling me, it's like telling me, can I take a dagger and, 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 and make a huge scratch on the Mercedes Benz that belongs to the neighbor? Uh, is that halal or haram? And you would tell me, well, you're foolish. Well, this body belongs to Allah, not to me, not to you. For you to take a dagger and to scratch it, it doesn't need a rocket scientist to know that that's not allowed. To harm your body in any way is prohibited. Tonight we will be speaking also about the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and trying to draw lessons from his life. How he lived, how he faced challenges, uh, some of the examples of his patience and uh, what he did, his perseverance, his dedication, his honesty, his hard working, uh, how focused he was, yet he was the best of creation. So I hope and I pray by, by this we can give people a role model uh, to follow by uh, he is there but we need to know details of his life you know it's easy for us to say Muhammadur Rasulullah which means Muhammad is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but do we really know what he did how much he sacrificed uh, it's not so easy to for, for, for a person to actually follow when they don't know much about whom they are following so I think uh, the idea is to try and get to know more of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that we are, we are able to follow him. I think that's what I will try and do this evening, inshallah. I've spoken uh, about ISIS recently, and I believe that they are not an Islamic group in the sense that they're, 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 what they are doing is against the teachings of Islam and the, the, the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They destroy infrastructure, they kill at will, they kill anyone and everyone. And I think even with you and I, they probably would eradicate us if they could. Uh, they would refute us and eradicate us anyway. So. These are not the teachings of Islam. And I've always said that the frustration that is built in the hearts and minds of the young Muslims who see atrocities committed across the globe against Muslims and no one seems to be doing anything about it, the minute they see someone like ISIS who is actually wrong, but they feel that maybe these, are, these people are the ones who are going to save the Muslim Ummah, not realizing that actually they are causing more harm than anything else. And it's, it's uh, created a lot of chaos. And this is why, if you notice, there are only very young people who join them, uh, the youth. You never find an old elderly, elderly person who actually joins them, even from among the scholars. There are no senior scholars of note who are well known across the globe who have supported them in any way. Uh, yeah, for all I care, everyone has actually uh, denounced them and everyone has refuted them. Uh, recently, I came across a fatwa of, of one of the, the top scholars whom I know, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Labbad, uh, and he refuted them in a very, very strong way, saying what they are doing is absolutely not Islam. It's far away from Islam. So I think we need to engage our youth. We need to uh, build the nation in a way that families happen to have a good relation with each other. I was reading a little bit about the Maldives, and one of the saddest things that you have is the divorce rate. Uh, it's very, very sad and I think we need more dedication, more tolerance. It shows intolerance. Everyone wants to do what they want to do and that's it. Uh, if that's the case, how will I be able to live with others? So it's a give and take relationship and I think we need to be able to try and uh, uh, work together inshallah. That's how we will combat extremism and that's how we will combat uh, people with false ideas. Another big issue is if a person prays five times a day, and if a person covers their, 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 you know, they wear their hijab, they cover their, their face or their hair, depending on what they have chosen, it does not make them extremists. And I think this is uh, some, uh, you know, a sad piece of information when we read that in certain countries, uh, they consider a person who reads five prayers a day as an extremist or a person who grows his beard or a woman who wears her hijab as an extremist. Yet, I think those are some of the most peace-loving citizens that those nations would ever have. But to create this phobia is not good. Uh, if that is happening in our nations, it also needs to be dealt with uh, in terms of being spoken about in a positive light. Uh, I think those who are dedicated to their, their maker uh, are different from those who are intolerant of others and extreme in their views. So there is a great difference between the two. It doesn't mean that a person who's dedicated to their maker is extreme. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all and I, I really believe that we have a great job to do and we shouldn't be resting until inshallah we see some form of fruit inshallah. I think every Ramadan brings with it an opportunity, a beautiful opportunity uh, to reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make resolutions, to quit our bad ways and habits, 
to become people who are more dedicated to Allah, to renew our vow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding uh, every weakness that we have to be able to eradicate it and all the uh, instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to uh, fulfill these instructions. So I think it's a beautiful month to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here it is around the corner. Let's not wait for it. Let's start preparing from now inshallah. So I believe if we, if we promise Allah that we are going to eradicate our habits, bad habits, we're going to become more dedicated, perhaps in our dress code, perhaps in our salah, in our recitation of the Quran, perhaps in quitting bad habits, you know, smoking itself. And I'm talking here of smoking cigarettes is a very, very bad habit.